Here is a recap of my talk at the NHA workshop this year. We shared various ways to take notes for a historical research project, analog and digital. The basic principles of analog and digital note taking are the same. With the index cards or in Scrivener or in Obsidian, you are learning how to brainstorm the outline to reorganize your narrative and argument. But then there's a question of scale. A murder board of intellectual connections works fine if you are doing a literature review for a comprehensive exam. But once you get into a major historical project, you may be overwhelmed with sources and connections, and a physical cork board will not be enough. The digital option helps you to take control of large data sets for long-term historical projects, but then drawbacks include cost and steep learning curve for most apps. Satana so and Obsidian provide a solution. Basic features are free. Basic setup uh, does not require programming skills. They can be linked together into one system. Very important. You can now link from an Obsidian node to the source in Zotero. Or if you have a source digitized, you can get from the node text to its exact place in the PDF and view it in context. Um, these programs are also sustainable. Zotero has institutional support and Obsidian has a large user community. And they scale up well for large data sets and long-term research project. So I created a page in GitHub where you can download the sample project that uses Zotero to work with Obsidian. The problem with history is that note-taking is a very individual practice for every historian. Even with index cards, we can see that social historians compose and organize them differently than historians of ideas. Whether you use tags or connection cards depends on the amounts of, and the kind of sources you get and what you plan to do with them. Right now, Sonke Aren's book, How to Take Smart Notes, based on the Zettelkasten principle, is very popular. Systems theorist Nicholas Luhmann published more than 70 books and 400 articles based on this method. But all of Luhmann's books were essentially based on the same theme, systems theory. Historical projects are much more varied from one another. Most importantly, keeping track of primary research is still key for historians, and Settlecaston is a weak base for that because it relies on serendipity as a way to generate insight. If you spent weeks in parish or regal records collecting data on 200 or more individuals, you don't want serendipity, you want foolproof ways to find and analyze the data. Tags in a database structure would be indispensable for such a project. The basic Obsidian workflow based on the Zettelkasten method in itself is not enough for historical note-taking. Historians need to combine free-form linking of ideas with structured data necessary to know who did what and when. But with some tweaking, Obsidian can support the same range of practices for a variety of projects. Obsidian notes are plain text files written in Markdown. Um, here is the Markdown syntax for all formatting in a note uh, from my sample vault. You can see italics. You can um, code an external link uh, to a web page or another program. You can create highlights with equal signs. You can create tags. You can create headings. You can set up field names and field data, separated by two columns. And most importantly, you can create links. This one you can create by clicking on it, or you can choose an existing link um, to a, a link to an existing note from a list. Or you can even link to a heading within a note. You can view connections between notes and embed them into overview notes to prepare for writing, um, like Lumen. You can also combine tags and links to trace social networks. Create and tag person, place, and event nodes, link them, and visualize with the graph view. 
You can also go the social history route. Tag with nested tags, find particular keywords in context, save your searches as dynamic folders, and filter and sort your sources by categories you create yourself, such as the date of event and source page number. By exporting Zotero source data for every note, you can take control of your primary sources and filter and sort not just by author and title and date of source, but by archive and folder. Um, so to sum up, um, there are several advanced features and best practices for historians available through the combination of Zotero and Obsidian. You can export your annotation from Zotero to Obsidian with source metadata and links back to Zotero. You can filter and sort by tag, by source, author, title, date, and page number, by archive and folder, by event date, or by any field you add yourself. You can trace social networks, create and link person, place, and event nodes, and visualize the connections. You can outline with a corkboard, shuffle around the many different parts that go into an article in a book. And you can finally write without stress by linking notes to formulate your own ideas and compose in manageable chunks.